Hey, you there. Yes, you. Have you ever wanted to play a build that would make your opponent run an entire marathon before they can even touch you? Ever wanted to fire so many projectiles that your opponent will feel like they're playing a bullet hell shooter? Do you want to make your opponent's base PS4 overheat and crash due to all the particle effects you're spawning? Then I have the build for you. Presenting Azure Storm. Featuring the most intense zoning pressure of any magic build, this level 125 build offers the widest array of tools delivering both damage and utility. While each tool may seem unimpressive individually, together they create a hole greater than the sum of their parts, offering a near 360 degrees of defense at any range. Powered by our carrying Glint Blade staff, our first line of defense is a combination of Glint Blade Phalanx and Magic Downpour, providing a protective barrier that deters opponents from rushing their target, allowing time to set up even more dangerous spell combinations. Next comes Magic Glint Blade and Charge Spiral, both capable of relentlessly tracking their target and dealing high damage. Once in medium range, you can fire off Shattering Crystal or Gravity Fan to catch strafing opponents. Swift's Glintstone Shard provides a reliable option for quickly punishing any whiffed attacks by the enemy. If your target manages to close the distance, normally this is where all magic builds fall apart, but this is actually where your build is at its most dangerous. In the right hand, we are armed with a Cold Banished Knight Halberd, capable of inflicting Frostbite, which can temporarily reduce your target's defense by 20%. The Halberd's R1 pokes let you reliably outspace and punish your target while also potentially dealing counter damage due to the piercing properties of the Halberd. After landing a successful R1, you can true combo into Carrying Slicer while free aiming sideways for even more damage. As an alternative, we have the Moonveil Katana, which needs no introductions. The Moonveil can reliably catch draping opponents and punish that inevitable bolus consumption on a frostbitten opponent. If your target is still somehow standing and you're low on FP, you can use these items to finish off a weak opponent. At low health, even a Cuckoo Glintstone can become a lethal weapon against any target. With clever use, even these consumable items can be effective punishing tools or combo setups. Here are my stats. Pause the video if you want to have a closer look. And now my equipment. For armor, I prefer to wear what is fashionable. However, you can wear stat boosting armor such as the Spellblade set for increased magic ash war damage or the various headpieces that increase certain stats. For talismans, I choose Godfrey's Icon for increased damage across all of my chargeable spells, which the majority of our selection is. Radigan's Icon to increase our casting speed, Millicent's Prestesis to increase our dex high enough to wield Moonveil and give us a boost on successive attacks, and finally, the Graven Mass Talisman for 8% more damage on all spells. The key to success with this build is to always be on the move and to have a deterred out at all times, whether it be Magic Downpour or Glint Blade Phalanx. You never want to be caught without having at least one of these spells on the screen. Now that we have all the introductions out the way, let us begin the live showcase. Bring it out when they got no health left. Oh, another magic build. The poor guy didn't know what to do. <laughs> until you start hitting them. And you couldn't do that in Kingdom Hearts 1 or 2. Oh, <laughs> GG. Uh. Yeah, at his endgame status, because Sora was basically in an endgame state at that point in the game. <laughs> My god! The Moonville weapon art is already kind of overpowered, so do I need the extra damage? Not really. Ah! I 
I tried it. I wanted to hit him with the weapon art. It just didn't come out for some reason. Got you! Do it again. Do it again, I dare you. He's not gonna do that again. Fire meet ice! <laughs> oh, this guy remembers me. This guy definitely remembers me. He knows. <laughs> Don't give Mike space. Don't give me space at all. Oh my god, <laughs> Magic Downpour actually put in work there. Poor dude. But the Samsung was much nicer. It was a, a 4K with um, HDR color. So, even though it was a costly upgrade, it was a good up upgrade nonetheless. Oh my god, I did the wrong magic again! But you see that? You see that? The hit stun? The hit stun saved me. How did that miss? How did that miss? What is going on? I miss Fahrenheit so much. It, it was way harder to dodge Fahrenheit. I've had it since launch, I just haven't had a chance to touch it yet. Because I've been trying to do Elden Ring stuff. Oh my god, how? How did I get frostbitten already? What the fuck? <laughs> that was the dude's first hit against me. What the fuck? He's gonna try to go for the running R2. Maybe I can catch him with the um, with this. GG on a great sword or a dual lances. Like as a mage, you're almost always gonna lose that trade. Oh, he knows I got Moon Veil. Oh, he's gonna heal. Dude! And he, he got this fucking map, too. From Soft, why do you do this to us? Come on, dude, engage. I, I'm a mage, I should be the one running. Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez. Killed him with the damn Cuckoo Glenstone. That's embarrassing. Killed by the Cuckoo. How often do you see that happen? Thank you for watching. Share your thoughts on this build in the comments below. If you think you can make this build even better, tell me your ideas. I'd love to hear them. As always, have a good one, and peace out.